This is the brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro with the new Apple M1 chip. In this video, we're gonna be testing out Final Cut Pro and seeing how fast it runs. And bear in mind, this is the new version 10.5, which has been built for the M1 chip. So how will this base MacBook Pro fare? We'll find out in this video. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if you're into Final Cut Pro or video editing. Now, as mentioned, we've got the brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro with the new M1 chip. And we're gonna be testing out Final Cut Pro just to see how fast it can run on the new base MacBook Pro. This is the MacBook Pro with just eight gigabytes of RAM. So how fast is it? Let's jump in and find out. Okay, so we're now on the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip chip let's open up this final cut test that I've created earlier as you can see final cut opens up super super quick I was quite surprised about that this is the base model and I'm just going to turn the volume down here on the MacBook Pro but you can see it plays back footage buttery smooth there is literally no lag at all on this version of final cut on this base 13 inch MacBook Pro you can see it's playing back really really smooth and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that we're on uh, let's go better quality you can see that when I even change that, we're on the highest quality playback. There's really no lag at all. So let's try around a, a bit of color correction. So let's try here with this footage here. Let's add a little bit of a color grade on here. Let's just play around, bring up the exposure. Oops, bring up the exposure. Bring that down a little bit. Let's bring the midtones down. Let's play around with the blacks. Let's pull the saturation up for a bit of fun. Colors looking okay. Let's make it a little bit bluer. Just play that back. And you can see there's no problems there when you're doing any kind of color grading at all. So let's try maybe a title. And I've got some titles in here. Let's bring some of these. So we've got, uh, oh, I forgot. I haven't actually imported my main titles from my MacBook Pro. We've got some titles from Motion VFX, which are really, really cool. And I'll go over those in another, in another video. But let's just, uh, this Tumble 3D, I know this always is a bit taxing on any computer. So let's put this on here. You can see it's thinking about kind of what it wants to do with it. And the rendering time for that. This always takes quite a long time. This, this 3D titles that Final Cut have always seem very, very slow. But you can see it's rendered that actually very, very quickly. It's only short, but let's just play that back and see how it looks. There we go. It's a bit X Factor feeling that title, but it's playing it back really, really well. So what I want to show you now, let's just do a little test of export. So as you can see, this is a three minute, 12 second footage. This is all 4K, 10 bit Dolby Vision footage in a Rec 709 color space. Let's export this now and see how quickly this M1 chip can export this compared to my old 13 inch MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna get my timer ready. We're gonna export in Apple devices 4K. It's called the FCPX M1 test. Settings, it's just gonna be the standard settings. Uh, I'm gonna change it to H.264 better quality, 3840 by 2160. And we're gonna hit next. I'm gonna save it to the Samsung T5, and then we're gonna hit start. And as we can see, it's now starting to share and export this video. So which will win the base model MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM or the 2020 Intel Core i5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM? Okay, and it's exported that in four minutes and 46 seconds. So a three minute 12 piece of timeline took four minutes and 46. Now let's try it out on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Okay, so we've loaded up the same timeline on my 13 inch MacBook Pro that I purchased just two months ago. And this is fully spec or was fully spec at the time. So we've got the same project. We've even left the little 3D title on that we did. And we're gonna do the same export because you know we know that this 13 inch MacBook Pro can edit okay. It's always been able to edit quite fine. 
but how fast will it be compared to the base model MacBook Pro? So let's try again, let's do the export. So we're gonna go to export, Apple devices, 4K, FCPX M1 test, we're fine with that. We are going for the better quality, we're keeping it in this. Uh, what was interesting to note actually, I did notice some extra resolution settings which aren't in this version and Final Cut is up to date on both systems. So it's interesting to see that we actually have more options to export, which is interesting to see. But anyway, let's export this and we're gonna start it in a second. We're gonna choose the Samsung T5 drive again. So we're just gonna export it to there. We're gonna hit save and then we're gonna hit start. So we're already exporting this. So let's pull this up to the top and we'll see how fast my trusty 13 inch Intel i5, 16 gigabytes of RAM MacBook Pro can do the same export. So there we go, it took six minutes and 22 seconds, which is a lot longer than the M1 chip MacBook Pro. So there we go, how about that? That was just for a bit of fun, but how crazy is that? This M1 chip base model beats my 13 inch 2020 MacBook Pro that I spent over 2,000 pounds on. This one costs just over 1,000 pounds, has half the amount of RAM, and it loads faster in Final Cut in that little test for export. I think it was a bit faster in the rendering too. So just to reiterate what happened there, my 13 inch MacBook Pro with uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM exported that test in six minutes, 22 seconds. The new M1 chip MacBook Pro with only eight gigabytes of RAM, this is just the base model, exported in four minutes and 46 seconds. So that is crazy. I mean, I know a lot of people don't use 13 inch MacBook Pros for video editing, but I do like a smaller MacBook Pro to take around with me. And we of course have uh, bigger iMacs here in the office for video editing and Premiere and Final Cut. But it's just amazing. I think a cheaper machine like this, it really shows the power of the M1 chip. And it's got me really excited to see what the future will hold when they actually do release the full MacBook Pro and the full iMac version with the M1 chip. This is gonna be super interesting. What did you think of that? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.